It's a bit of a Wild West landscape out there at the moment, isn't it? You see a lot of old faces coming back from nowhere, people saying, ah, I've got the answer to it all. And the question I think that we've got to ask ourselves is who can we trust? You certainly can't always trust me, uh, not because I'm trying to do anything nefarious or anything like that, but I'm infallible. I make, uh, I'm fallible, rather. I make mistakes. There we are. There was one an example of it. I don't always know what's going on. And I don't watch mainstream media and I don't read the newspapers. I don't listen to the radio. And in fact, I've taken myself out of that because I think so much that's going on at the moment in the, uh, in the crazy world that we're living in uh, is seeking your attention. And it may not be quite what it seems it would appear to me. Uh, and so taking myself away from the mainstream media and seeing people like um, Farage being milkshaked, um, is that the second time that he's been milkshaked? That does seem like a bit of a repeat. Um, maybe a, a message to you. I watched a video this morning uh, that uh, somebody had shared with me on the email. And thank you very much for the email. And again, I apologize if I don't manage to get back to you because there's so many of them. But somebody sent me a video and it was an interesting video and I did watch it and I don't get to watch all of it. So um, this is one of the problems. You get overwhelmed with material. But the interesting thing in that was saying that the woman who threw the milkshake. Now, I haven't actually even seen the news article where he was milkshaked again. I only hear that by, um, I suppose, down the line from somebody who's mentioned it or sent me a clip or something. And I haven't even managed to get around to seeing it. But anyway, the woman who was supposed to have thrown the milkshake... Um, was uh, somebody who apparently, and I, I can't verify any of this, has got their own OnlyFans page um, and it was set up. And there's a photograph of um, Farage with this woman beforehand smiling and laughing. So the suggestion is that the whole thing was set up to give the impression that... Uh, well, I don't know what the impression was because I, I don't really know what Farage, Farage stands for these days. And I've kept myself away from all these uh, figures. And it's very difficult to know because, as I said earlier, we seem to see the old, same old figures who've got themselves very much established in our minds. And perhaps we do think of them as freedom fighters. People are there for the people. And the suggestion in this video that I watched was, yeah, but this is all part of the plan. And is it? I mean, I don't know. Is it? Also part of the plan is the idea that the WEF and the WHO are going to be turned into such hated organisations that uh, we demand for them to go down and something else goes up in its place. But that something that goes up in its place is the very thing that the dark forces or the Freemasons or the Luciferians or the Satanists actually wanted in place in the first place, in the first instance, but they had to create something that was going to turn into a monster that we would demand, no, we don't want any of that because they've mandated certain medical interventions. And so in the end that collapses and we've seen what's going on with uh, Dr. Fauci. Um, and we saw that with Klaus Schwab, you know, these characters who look like villains. They've been made to look like and appear like villains in the videos and films, the feature films. And then eventually they so slowly disappear and somebody else is put in. And you think, oh, thank God the villains have gone. We're all saved. Only to realise that this is far worse. But what actually hasn't happened is that you and I watching uh, this, that we haven't had really any say in any of it because it's all been planned down the line. And that in order to break this system, we actually not have to acquiesce to any of this nonsense about who's suddenly, oh yeah, well, there's this new organisation and they seem the best thing since sliced bread. Well, how do we know that and who's in it? And, and maybe some of these old faces that we have thought were on our side are not. And it's very difficult. It's very difficult to know who you're going to trust. Who are you going to trust? And then if you have organisations that seem to be grassroots that come out of nowhere and you think, well, I don't know who they are, maybe as they don't have a track record, they may not be suitable or maybe they are suitable because they're not connected with the government. But we don't know. It is very, very difficult to know what's going on and who's in charge and how these long term plans. And that's one thing that we do know, that these people have had these long term plans are going and the suggestion in the video that i was watching is of course it is to carry on and push us towards transhumanism to take away our creativity to take away our ability to um, 
be part of the universe or to be connected to source, to ascend and, and all these uh, wonderful things um, and actually to keep us going towards the digital, transhuman, improve ourselves. And to be honest, the people I think that you more likely are to trust are those that actually say, I'm not interested in that area. I'm not interested in that continual need to progress, that actually um, I'm much more inward looking, more looking to inspiration, more looking to creativity, more looking to connecting with one source, having um, much more to do with grassroots. But, um, you know, it's... At the moment, it just I'm just finding it very confusing whom to put my trust in unless you've met them, unless you've met them, shaken hands with them, maybe had a meal with them, danced with them, smiled with them and and so on. And uh, it's very easy for the uh, for the dark forces to put people up who laugh and grin. But there's many of them that I certainly wouldn't trust. And many of them have been around and no doubt been promised great success they've just had to wait for it so who do you trust it's a it's a big question and as I say I'm not asking anyone to trust me because as I said before I make mistakes I put a video out it seems like a good idea at the time I may have completely got it all wrong um, and you have to make up your own mind but then uh, to be honest with you, I am not looking to lead anything. I don't want to be part of anything. And people do come to me and they say, Richard, will you will you endorse this or will you do that? And I say, no, I'm just going to stay completely on the edge of things. I'm going to be independent. I don't want to be uh, leading anything. Uh, to, I, I want to get back to the land. I want to sit in a, uh, a shepherd's hut with my pipe and my beautiful girlfriend, the lovely Julia, uh, manage a little farm, try and make some food, build a, a, a community or, or a, a group of people, its own village and bring back the old crafts. I want to be isolated from this modern digital progressive world in which uh, uh, one way or another it's sort of still going in towards world domination. I don't want any of that. I, I, I think that's um, absolutely the wrong direction. I want to be much more in tune with nature, in tune with myself and the, my fellows and just to live in the most simple and uh, basic way possible, really, and enjoy the world, the inner world and the outer world at the same time and bring up a generation who appreciate real things instead of all this digital nonsense that we're going. That's where I want to be. Now, I know not everybody is going to agree with that. They're going to think that's very simplistic, that it's old fashioned, that you open yourself up to abuse or attack from those that are perhaps more military minded and and want to go and do all the killing but um there it is you know i'm 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 just not interested in in this the, the more the world is becoming more materialistic and and you have people are saying you know you can you can buy like a millionaire and have everything that you ever want at incredibly cheap prices and and fill your house with uh, absolute tat i don't want that in fact I want to fill, I want to get rid of much more and be more attuned to life itself and what that means to me. Now, um, so I don't know who you trust. I don't know who you trust, but I certainly think anything that you see on mainstream media, any of the news reports that you see, milkshake flying and this happening and this happening, all of that is orchestrated. Somebody somewhere has decided you will see that. Well, I don't see any of it. Uh, I hear about it, some of it, but I don't see any of it firsthand because I've chosen not to engage. The news is not news as we might have thought 20, 30 years ago. And even then it was probably dubious about what we saw on the news. All of it is propaganda. And the people who are being put up to be our saviours, I think, are probably all wrong ones anyway because you don't have them appearing on the screen if those people who are in control of the media let them be there. So I, I think that's the thing. Um, now, I just want to switch switch tactics because some people say, you know, Richard, we'd love to come and see you. Where are you? Where are you doing? And people do ask me to um, do bits and bobs. And again, as I say, I have to be very careful whom I endorse or what, where I'm talking. Mostly it's uh, myself on my own. 
uh, and so people can come and they can see who I am and what I am and what I stand for and ask me questions face to face. So the first thing I want to tell you about, if you happen to be in Sussex um, at the Changing Times, which is uh, stimulating lectures on the unexplained mysteries, truth issues and alternative views. And um, I'm going to be doing a, a talk here at, on Tuesday the 18th of June, which is coming up fairly soon. Um, it's up to us taking back responsibility. And this is very much the theme that I've had all the time. There's a wacky picture of me doing a bit of mime there. Um, is that we do need to take back this responsibility. Uh, and we don't need to rely on these people that the media are putting forward saying, you know, like, whatever is going to replace the WEF or the WHO or the governments of this world. I think, and I've said this so many times on this channel, that system, I think, is dangerous because people will continue to sort of bring you into their thing. And I think taking back the responsibility is you and I and our neighbours and our friends and people who perhaps have no experience in doing any of this, building back a new world for us, for us, not for them, not for those who've already been in the business and have made millions and have in the in the, and have had opportunities. They've had their time. Thank you very much. It's all very exciting. We've seen how you work. We, I, I don't I don't want it. I don't want to be part of that. You can go and have your jurisdiction somewhere else, but leave us alone. And I think that's that's what we've got to really do and, and not be drawn in to these so-called saviours because I don't think that they are necessarily our saviours. So that's one event. The other event that's coming up is um, the Better Way event. This is a detox and well-being fair. Um, and, I, and you'll know that uh, we've had Dr. Tess Laurie on the show a few times and of course Julia and I were at the Better Way conference last year and we met some amazing people. This is on from the 14th to 15th of June so it's coming up very soon at Winkworth Farm in Wiltshire. Again I'll leave the link in the description and uh, there's talks and workshops. I'm actually emceeing so I should be wandering around and bringing people on, bringing them off and you can, um, that sounded a bit dodgy didn't it, bringing them off. Um, and uh, you can come up and have a chat with me if you so wish and ask questions and what have you. Doctors, holistic practitioners, there'll be health stalls and things. There's live music. Um, it's a celebration. It's a celebration on getting rid of the poisons and getting back to some balance of nature. Which um, and, and again, do your own due diligence about everything. Don't just take whatever everybody says. But uh, it's a great learning experience. So it's uh, lots of things that you can do learn about the root cause of disease, uh, get help, solutions. It's uh, hosted by myself and Dr. Tess Laurie uh, with uh, Christoph Ploth, who will also be there. And look, there's all these wonderful speakers. Um, I don't know why they put a big picture of me. I'm the least important person there. Clive de Carl is going to be there I mean, and, and, and all of these others. I mean, there's so many, too many to mention um, at different points. So if you want to hear different perspectives on health and uh, well-being this is the sort of place that you you want to get to uh, and it's it's on a farm it's actually outdoors on a farm it's going to be great it's not in a corporate building um, it's out and about and there'll be food and music and a whole load of stuff and I'll leave the link here and you can see uh, exactly what's going on what time people are coming in and, and talking so I think it will be very interesting and let's just hope Let's just hope that the, the schedule also falls in with the pilots who are spraying the skies at the moment. I do feel that it would be really useful. I mean, we could get rid of the weather forecasters. We don't need those. We don't need to tune into television and be lied to by weather forecasters who, who you know, looking into their crystal ball and saying, oh, the weather's going to be this and the weather's going to be that. I think we can get shot of that. If only we were just given the pilot's roster you know, the ones spraying the skies, if they gave us the pilot's roster and said, OK, you know, these are the times when the pilots are flying. Uh, these are the times when the service men are uh, looking after the aeroplane. So they're down for a service and making sure the aeroplanes don't fall to bits. And then if, and these are the times the pilots are having a day off. Well, if we knew when the pilots were having a day off, we'd know that there would actually be broad sunshine again. Uh, and if we knew, oh, yeah, they work from Monday to Thursday, but Friday they, this week they've got off, we could plan to go away and have a nice day, couldn't we? So I'm hoping that the weather will be lovely on this, 
on the uh, the 14th to the 15th uh, coming up. So there were a couple of events that I'm on. Uh, so do come along if you can. That's in Wiltshire, and it looks like fun. But back to the uh, back to the other one on a final note. Uh, yes, just be careful. I mean, we've got to be so careful. And I think as things become perhaps a bit rocky, we'll all be looking for the new saviors and all of this. And we've got to be very careful who we choose. We're probably better off with our friends and neighbours and those that we have a personal connection rather than the ones that would like us, you know, who are putting their heads up, who've been established for a while and would like us to trust them. And uh, you just don't know how far back these plans have been put in place and that certain so-called saviours have been put there so that we believe them. And uh, ultimately, we know who we really believe. And, um, and that's where we've got to put our faith. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.